Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Teresa Marentet, CEO and Chief Nursing Officer of the Windsor-Essex County Health Unit. Before I share the local numbers of people infected with COVID-19 in Windsor-Essex and surrounding communities, I want to highlight the importance of adhering to the key public health messages we have been sharing throughout the pandemic. People are instructed to stay home during this time, maintain a physical distance of two meters when out for a daily walk or for a necessary grocery run, wash your hands often with soap and water, cough or sneeze into a tissue and discard the tissue in a lined garbage pail or sneeze into your arm if needed and then wash your hands and clean and disinfect surfaces regularly, including doorknobs and light switches. We cannot overstate the importance of all of these measures. Thank you to all of you who are doing your part. Your continued efforts are needed to help stop the spread of COVID-19. We have been receiving a lot of calls from concerned residents about those not adhering to public health recommendations. If you have concerns about restaurants, bars, tobacco and vape shops, please contact the Windsor-Essex County Health Unit and we will follow up. Reports of non-essential businesses being open, people not physically distancing, and people gathering in groups larger than five, please contact 311 in Windsor or your local municipality bylaw office in the county. Reports of people not adhering to self-isolation orders or quarantine orders based on travel should be reported to the non-emergency line for police services. These people will be reported to our health unit for further follow-up, which can include an order under the Medical Officer of Health. I will now share our daily updates. We now have 15,000 512 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada and 4,038 cases in Ontario. Chatham-Kent has 12 cases and Sarnia-Lampton has 79 cases. Michigan now has 15,718 cases with 4,495 4, cases in Detroit. We now have 204 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Windsor-Essex. 27% of our cases are between 50 and 59 years of age, 41% are male, and 59% are female. We are currently working with six long-term care facilities that are experiencing COVID-19 outbreaks. The health unit continues to follow up directly with everyone who has tested for COVID-19, both positive and negative results. Those that are awaiting results are to remain in self-isolation. Overall, 1,534 individuals have been tested for COVID-19, and of those tested, 148 tests are pending. Testing for COVID-19 should be based on clinical assessment where there are shortages of testing kits and the following groups will be prioritized for testing. Symptomatic healthcare workers and staff who work in healthcare facilities, symptomatic residents and staff in long-term care homes, hospitalized patients admitted with respiratory symptoms, symptomatic members of remote, isolated rural and indigenous communities, and symptomatic travelers identified at a point of entry to Canada. Please continue to visit WeChu.org for the most current information and case counts. Many, many of our frequently asked questions are posted on our website. If you are feeling unwell and need to seek a health assessment for COVID-19, there are three options. Complete the online self-assessment tool available at, at Ontario.ca, contact Telehealth Ontario, or call your primary health care pr provider for a phone assessment or a virtual assessment if available. They will guide you for next steps, including contacting public health or attending an assessment center. I will now turn it over to Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health, for further updates regarding COVID-19. Good morning. Just over two weeks ago, Windsor-Essex County Health Unit reported the first confirmed COVID-19 case. We now have 204 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Windsor and Essex County. 
The sudden rise in unconfirmed cases are attributed to delay in receiving the results from the public health lab in the beginning. But as the lab capacity increased in the last weeks, the results are coming back in a timely manner. Right now, there's 148 tests pending, which is a good indicator that many of these test results are coming back within 20, 24 to 48 hours. The other cause of these increase could be attributed to a community transmission. Just like many of the communities in Ontario, we are also dealing with COVID-19 outbreaks in long-term care homes, retirement homes in our community. Managing these outbreaks is a priority for the Windsor Six County Health Unit. Our staff are working closely with these homes to ensure that appropriate measures are in place to control the outbreak in these facilities. The staff and leadership in these facilities are doing a great job to manage the outbreak and put control measure in place to prevent further spread in, the, in these homes. Over the weekend, CDC recommended that all citizens start wearing homemade cloth masks when going outside. The CDC indicates that the use of cloth masks in public where distancing is difficult to maintain such as grocery store or other public settings. In Canada, to date, there is no recommendation for the public to wear masks when going outside, but I also do not want to deter residents from taking all appropriate precautions to protect themselves and others. Given the concerns of shortage of personal protective equipment, healthcare workers should have access to surgical or procedure masks and N95 masks as a priority. Healthcare workers are the one who are at the front line and we should leave all these essential supplies for them to keep them safe, to keep the hospitals and healthcare system running. For everyone else, if they are considering the use of homemade masks, they need to take the following steps. Before putting on a mask, wash your hands with soap and water thoroughly. Secure the elastic loops around your ears. Ensure the mask completely covers your nose and mouth and there are no gaps. Do not touch the mask while wearing it and remove by the elastic loops or ties. Wash your hands thoroughly and throw away in a secure and proper way. This is important. You should not leave it uh, discarded in, in a way which puts other people at risk. If it's a, if it's a washable one, please wash in a washing machine uh, with, with hot water. Most important, the best protection from COVID-19 is to stay home as much as possible. Ensure physical distancing from others, minimum of two meters at all times. Wash your hands regularly and thoroughly. Do not touch your face, nose, mouth, or eyes before. At this stage, if you are someone who think you have uh, COVID-19, please contact your healthcare provider for a telemedicine assessment. Our primary care group colleagues have really worked hard to arrange telemedicine consult for their patients. Your doctor can make a determination if you need testing or make referral to the hospital or to the assessment center. I continue to urge you, please do not go outside if you do not have to. If you do go outside, always maintain a distance of two meters from each other. Physical distancing is a very important measure and it can make a difference between life and death for some. Look after your family members, look after your neighbor, support them while still maintaining the two meters distance. Please be safe, do your part in protecting your community and break the chain of transmission. Thank you. At this point, I think the risk and benefits for wearing a mask is uh, is uh, is on the side that people, if they choose to wear, we're not recommending it. But recognizing that we are a border town, many of the people are watching what's happening in the U.S. and around the world. And if they choose to wear that, those are some of the recommendations from us. I'm not advocating that everyone should be wearing a mask at this time. Why not, given the fact that community transmission is a concern and wearing a mask prevents others from getting the virus if by chance you are asymptomatic and you have the virus. Why not encourage that then? Well, there are, if people start to use these masks properly, I think that's better. 
Homemade masks are not as effective as many people think. It gives a false sense of security. Many people, when wearing the mask, may think that they are safe and they may take some of these measures which put them at risk. Touching your hands while wearing a mask could be a problem because now you're exposing directly this mask to, to uh, potential viruses which you are coming in contact with. So I think we need to recognize that yes, there could be some benefit, but there could be some risk that could come with it. So as long as people who are wearing it, they recognize that risk, they make sure that they're taking all these measures to ensure that they're not putting themselves at risk. And I think that's the key part. People shouldn't be getting into that false sense of security that if they're wearing a mask, they are safe and protected. That's what my concern is. But recognizing that many, many people, there are a lot of changes that are happening and people may actually use the mask safely. If that is the case, then they can use it. And again, once the reminder from CDC is the mask will still not save you from, uh, from, from contracting the virus, but it will, it will prevent some of these early pre-symptomatic phase, if you are sick, then it can protect others instead of protecting yourself. So I think there's, people need to understand that it, the mask is, is not the one solution to everything that we are talking about. Your best measure still is the physical distancing piece. If you are in a situation where you cannot maintain those physical distance, then wearing a mask could, could, be, uh, could provide additional uh, benefit for you. So we have caught up with more of those testings and uh, I cannot give you an exact breakdown but uh, the test results are coming back very quickly uh, especially if they belong to one of those priority group there may be few that are still outstanding but majority of those tests that we that were in the backlog we cleared all of that and uh, we are getting more recent results now any questions from Windsor I would be increasing So the cases that we have seen, it's a combination of the community and long-term care home. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a combination of both. Any questions from CTV? I think I'm good. Any questions from CDC? So can you please repeat your question again? Of the 204 cases, how many are healthcare workers who work in Detroit? Uh, we provided our epi summary breakdown last Friday, and uh, we will do it uh, one more time uh, this um, uh, every Friday. So we, you can expect to hear more from us. But what I can say is, at least 30% uh, of the cases that we are seeing in our community are healthcare workers, and uh, further breakdown. The healthcare workers between Detroit and here would happen on on Friday when we are compiling all those results after collecting data from uh, all the positive cases. Okay, and how many of those healthcare workers in Detroit are hospitalized here? With um, I am not sure that any of them are hospitalized, but uh, I'll have to check back. And uh, I'm not aware that if any of them are hospitalized at this point. Okay, and seeing someone email in that mosquitoes may carry COVID-19. Do you have any information that is a uh, Right now, there is no evidence that uh, mosquitoes uh, can carry uh, COVID-19. Um, so we're just, uh, um, I guess we'll, we'll have to wait and see if it changes. But right now, there is no evidence to say that uh, mosquitoes can transmit COVID-19. Okay. And can you just uh, go over one more time? when people should be calling in if they see infractions, which infractions they should be calling in about. So I'll, I'll invite uh, Teresa Marita to give that uh, detail again. I'll just uh, 
recap the uh, information I, I spoke about earlier. So if you have concerns about restaurants, bars, tobacco and vape shops, you contact the health unit and we will follow up. Uh, reports of non-essential businesses being open, people not physically distancing, and people gathering in groups larger than five, uh, then we're asking people to call 311 if you're in Windsor or the local municipality bylaw office if you're in the county. Um, reports of anyone not adhering to self-isolation orders or quarantine orders uh, based on travel recommendations or requirements, they should be reporting um, uh, those concerns to the non-emergency line uh, for police services and they will follow up with the health unit and possibly if needed uh, we can issue an order under the medical officer of health. Thank you. Any other questions? I will follow up. I guess. Can you indicate how many people are voting about people not social isolating? We were hearing about there being a big group of people over at Coventry Garden along the waterfront this past weekend. Are you hearing those same concerns and complaints? We do get a lot of calls, but we are streamlining it, um, the complaints and working with law enforcement. So they have, um, you know, auxiliary um, uh, police officers out and they've increased their, their focus as well under the Emergency Management and Civilian Protection Act. So I think you'll see more and more of enforcement out in our community. Uh, we do get calls. Uh, we continue to receive calls, but uh, we are trying to to address address them the best way we can. But we really are relying on our law enforcement, both in the city and in the county. So, with the um, the law enforcement piece, it can be between seven hundred and fifty dollars to a thousand dollars, or or further um, further penalties. Uh, and regarding if we were to issue an order under Section 22, which is a, an order from the Medical Officer of Health, it can be five thousand dollars a day. There are also higher uh, penalties for those that are part of corporations or businesses. And uh, they're like thousands, tens of thousands. Oh, 25,000 per day. So I guess the regular flow now is that if people have complaints, they call 311 or, you know, the cop shop. And then if it gets to a point where it becomes serious, then you guys are notified when the proper uh, steps are taken after that, right? For people that are, are supposed to be self-isolating, so if you've had a test, you should be self-isolating immediately, and um, or if you're positive. So if we hear of reports and through the police, we will follow up, um, or sometimes they're coming to us directly. Any other questions? Do you know any of those orders or fines have been levied already? I do, know that, I do know that our health unit has issued um, some orders regarding some businesses uh, through our own health unit uh, tobacco enforcement officers. So businesses that are open that shouldn't be? Yes. yes. Okay. One last one. Sure. Just curious, how many people, do we know how many people have recovered? I'm looking at our epidemiologist, but we, we might not have that exact number. We have, we have received a lot of feedback about posting that number, and we will look to do that yeah, on okay. the website. 16? Right. Oh, 16 people have recovered, okay. according to our epidemiologist, Ramsey. But we'll verify that on the website. Yeah, okay. Thank you. And we will update our website to make sure that information's up there. Any other questions? Okay, thank you everyone.